on this episode of Pedalbox, we're delving into the engine bay and cleaning it up. Don't forget to subscribe. Well, as you can see, we've made a ton of progress since the end of the last episode on the Thunderbird. The bonnet is still off. The yellow wire is still missing on that side. We haven't rewired it yet because we have got neither the replacement wire nor the connector block to glue it all together. All told, going really well here. But we're finally, after two long years, we're finally going to start working on the engine. Now, apparently the engine this ran when it was parked up, taken off the road, whatever was the story there. The only problem that it actually had from a driving perspective was that the transmission didn't have any oil in it, so it wouldn't actually grab any gears. So the engine that supposedly ran when it was parked, and that we really probably should have run at some point by now, is uh, kind of an unknown to us. We're going to start doing a couple of bits and pieces of kind of... Um, preparatory and investigative work and hopefully we can have it running I'm not going to say this weekend I'm not stupid uh, but hopefully we can have it running relatively soon maybe even in time for Christmas we've done all our prep I've got my cup of tea here which is the most important part to start any work and we've numbered up we've put little uh, silver paint pen marks on all of our HT leads so we know where they all go back to obviously we can figure it out from the distributor but it's easier this way so now we're all good to turn the engine over by hand now if there is any fuel or water or anything in the cylinders it'll stop won't hit anything, but we'll know that there's something up. I'll let Abe do the hard part. Happy days. So, it's not hydrolocked. Fire up. <laughs> so a couple of minutes ago, I go to Aid with a great idea. Hey Aid, why don't we pull the, pull the spark plugs out and inspect them, see if the engine's happy. And then I got one of the plugs out and stared at it. And I just realized I have no idea how to tell from looking at a spark plug whether the, whether the engine's happy. I mean, it's sooty. Don't know what that means. For all I know, it could be rich, it could be lean. Genuinely no idea. So I'm going to look it up on the internet. But instead, we put the plugs back in and went back to stripping the engine down. The carb looked okay, but underneath there was lots of oxide buildup on the plate and both sets of butterflies seemed pretty stiff. So we're going to have to try and release those before we put it back on. Quite a long time ago, in fact when we last moved the Thunderbird around on the drive, which is at least 18 months ago, uh, we were turning the steering wheel and for some reason the wipers started moving. And we stopped, laughed and went, well that's absolutely ridiculous, why on earth is that happening? And completely forgot about it after that, other than, huh, remember when the steering wheel turned the wipers, isn't that weird? Well, now we've decided that we're going to pull all the accessories off the front of the engine so we can give it a better clean since we've done the back and the top. We can do a much better clean down the front, spruce up the accessories and generally make the engine look a little bit better. And whilst we're disconnecting the power steering pump, there is this pipe that runs all the way up into the dash. And that triggered a memory in a video that I saw a couple of months ago now which said that the 66 Thunderbird had hydraulically operated wipers. And I thought, well, that's weird. How on earth could they possibly be powered? And again, didn't look into it, completely forgot about it, till right now that I've just realised that the power steering pump will provide hydraulic pressure to operate the wipers. And if the engine's not running and we turn the steering wheel and the wipers are engaged, that will back pressure the system and cause the wipers to move. It's a bit weird. I wouldn't have thought that that would be a thing at all, but apparently, Hydraulically operated wipers can be turned in an emergency with the steering wheel. In fairness, it is probably not advisable if you're in the rain to just start wildly weaving down the road to try and clear your windscreen. So we were about to take the pipe off this and then we realised that if the wipers are working, that must mean that the system is still full. And that means as soon as we pull these off, it's going to drain hydraulic fluid everywhere. So I'm just going to have to try and crack this off with the grips because it is completely solid we've already undone the little jubilee clip and just release this as best we can and hopefully not just pour power steering fluid over the entire car but that's probably going to happen anyway because this is going to be an absolute nightmare
Now we've got the power steering pump off, we've got all of the accessories here and we can start going through them and doing what we've been doing lots of on this car, which is just cleaning and tidying up brackets and things. Steering pump's actually not too bad. It needs a bit of a clean down and then a quick bit of uh, black paint and that will be fine. The alternator basically just wants degreasing and the bracket repainting. The power steering pump bracket, much the same, really isn't too bad. The carburetor, actually this pipe as well, is great. It has a, an anti-collapse um, anti coil in it, which is great if it weren't for the fact that it was steel and also therefore rusty. So that's going to need cleaning out as well. Probably along with the rest of the cooling system, at some point it's going to have to be flushed through time and time and time and time again. However, the big one that we need to really look into is the carburetor. This has been stood for at least two years that we know of. We know it ran before, but it's definitely looking a little bit worse for wear. If you look on the underside where we've taken it off, there's a lot of uh, aluminium oxide around here. So we need to blast all of that off with some air, clean this out and generally make sure all the mechanicals work before we can test it and then see if it actually, actually works. And I'm probably going to end up buying a rebuild kit for this next time I'm in the States. Well, after many hours' work, we've managed to get the components at the front of the engine, all the accessories, the radiator, looking a lot better than they were. They certainly look a lot better than when they were covered in grime and muck, and in some cases, a lot of rust. And start with the radiator, I didn't realise these were made of brass, or at least, if nothing else, they're brass plated. And I really, really like the look of this after we spent probably three or four hours each end cleaning them off and getting them back to this condition. Now, the front's just had a quick coat of black paint over it, same for the back, uh, and the the brace at the bottom still needs a little bit more paint on it, but I'm wondering whether or not to leave these end tanks as brass and just leave them lacquered over. And the same goes for the, I'll just put that very, very carefully down so as not to ruin the end tanks. Same goes for the water tank. Didn't realise it was brass, we started going through it, found that it was also made of brass or brass plated one way or another. It's got some dent marks, some repair marks, various other bits, but we could just lacquer over this and leave it and then put it back on the car. And I think that would look quite good with the water tanks on the end of the radiator also being just lacquered brass. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether or not we should go more stock or whether we should leave it like this. I'm undecided, though I do like this, but I am a big fan of the stock look. And I've got a new gasket to go in the back end of that where it goes onto the tank and a new thermostat because this one isn't going to work. The cage that holds the spring in at some point snapped before we even took it off, so it definitely wasn't working in the car. And we need a new one. Fortunately, in my infinite wisdom, if you can call it that, I managed to pick one up. It did take me about 20 minutes to remember where I'd put it, though. So the hoses have cleaned up reasonably nicely. They don't appear to be too badly perished. Um, there's a couple of little bits on the outside, but I think that's just where it's got warm. There are a couple of splits developing at the end, so I will probably pick up a couple of new ones of these at some point. But for now, these will be perfectly fine. Um, they've still got their springs inside so they don't collapse down either, which is really useful. So they're all good to go back on. The alternator has been cleaned up as well. The armature um, fan and pulley around the front. Spins really nice and freely now. It didn't quite before, but it works nicely and it's come up quite clean. So we've also obviously painted the, the front end so that that's all good. And the same goes for a bunch of the brackets and the pulleys. So that's the pulley that goes onto the fan on the front of the water pump. So that's all been cleaned up. And this is the power steering pump. Now, originally I think this was black, because uh, we took a lot of black paint off it one way or another. It was either black or it was very, very well stuck on dirt. But I actually quite like it, just kind of brushed, stay, brush, brushed steel. Um, we went over this, again, it's got dents, it's got dings on. We could paint it up, but it'll never look perfect, same as the, the tanks on the, uh, the water side. Um, so I'm wondering whether to just leave this lacquered as it is, so it won't rust because of the lacquer, and we just put it back, put it back on the car. Uh, again, let me know in the comments what you think, and ultimately we'll make a decision before it all goes back together. Now the really big stumbling block to putting the whole thing back together is the carb. Now we took this off and it was looking really grimy, and we have spent a good deal of time going through this trying to uh, clean it up. And ultimately we got to a point where we started just submerging it in cleaning solution and really soaking these butterfly valves because they are completely locked solid. The mechanism up top all works really nicely, the um, secondary is open, but 
the butterfly valves don't. You can see one of the screws is also missing in the bottom of there. Um, it actually looks like it's broken off. So that would have to be replaced or should probably be replaced at any rate. Um, but we just can't get these to come out. So this is going to have to be a huge strip down and I'm, I'm going to have to get that rebuild kit or find another one because I haven't found so far how to get these butterfly valves out. Everything else, I found ways and means that you take everything apart, but the butterfly valves, if they're completely stuck, I don't know how you get the shafts out that hold them in place in order to clean and, um, and really recondition this whole thing. So I think that might be a live stream at some point. We'll sit down in the studio and just take this apart and strip it down as much as we possibly can with as many pictures as possible to make sure that we don't forget how to do it. But that's basically where we're up to at the moment. We've managed to get everything back ready to go on. But between that and the wiring loom, we've hit a bit of an impasse. So as long as the rest of the wiring is okay, we can put everything back together. We started going into the wiring because we thought, well, we've got to plug everything back into the alternator, put the sensors back on, well, what few sensors there are. We've got to plug everything back in. Before we put it back, we might as well just make sure it looks okay. Hence, we took all the wiring uh, harness covering off and we're going to put some new stuff on. So it'll probably be some loom tape, some sparky tape where needed just to hold the bundles together throw it all back in and then pin it around the car. But we've done so much wiring already and we know so little realistically about that Thunderbird one. We've done so much on the kit car and I'm gonna bore you with all of that. So we've just been plugging away and working through the wiring to get that ready for the next time we do work on it. We can put all of this back together. Unfortunately, that's probably not gonna be when we restart it because of the Carberry build. Now, if you want to help support any of the builds, you can do it at shop.pedalbox.show, where you can pick up merch. We've got more t-shirts coming this year. If you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow, where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Our five, ten, and twenty dollar levels get access to the Discord and a bunch of other benefits, including discount on the merch at uh, the Pedalbox shop. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time with more work on the projects.